What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be covering all of the weapon balancing changes that came with the Season 5 Reloaded update. I realize I'm operating a couple days behind at this point, that's just because I just got back from my honeymoon, still getting my bearings a little bit. I've also got several gun guides that have piled up that I will be covering within the next week or so. But without further ado, let's dive right into this. There were a lot of very small changes with this update. And the first one is the F-Tac Siege. With this, there was a slight buff to our damage ranges, and this applies to our six shot kill potential as well as our seven shot kill potential. Both of these ranges were just very slightly increased. So you may notice the F-Tac Siege performing just slightly better than pre-patch. After that, the ISO 45 got buffs to three of its damage ranges, not the maximum damage range, but its four shot kill potential, its five shot kill potential, and its six shot kill potential have all been increased by a fairly noticeable amount, actually. This is a notable buff to the ISO 45, which I think is a good thing since I do feel like they over nerfed this just slightly a little while back. But then finally, for the SMG category, the Lockman sub saw a very, very slight reduction to its three shot kill potential. It used to be 8.9 meters, now it's 8.1 meters. So now it does have a very slightly shorter three shot kill potential than the Vaznev. But honestly, you probably won't notice a big difference here whatsoever. After that, let's move into the Assault Rifle category, and the FR Avancer got a slight buff to its four and five shot kill ranges. And on top of this, they mentioned they reduced the hip fire spread. However, when standing still, it's exactly the same as it was pre-patch, so this must be well moving. And unfortunately, I don't have the pre-patch data to compare that directly to, so we're just gonna have to take their word on that one. Then the Tempest Razorback got an increase to its damage range as well. And I would say this one is reasonably noticeable. This was a nice buff to the Tempest Razorback. After that, for the M16, there was a noticeable buff to the maximum damage range where you can get a three shot kill anywhere in the torso. So a one burst kill anywhere in the torso. However, our one burst kill potential is still the same. Next for the cast off 74U, we did see a reduction to our four and five shot kill potentials with this gun. However, our maximum damage range, our three shot kill potential is exactly the same as pre-patch. So it's just going to be slightly less effective as you're stretching that range out. And then finally for assault rifles with the ISO hemlock, we can see our second and third damage range drop offs have been reduced. However, our maximum damage range was untouched with this gun. Moving on, let's get into the battle rifle category. And with the TAC-V, we saw a very, very slight buff to our damage ranges. You'll probably never notice this change. It was so minor. It's a pretty similar story with the Cronin Squall in full auto. There was a bit of an improvement to our three shot kill potential in full auto. However, in semi auto, the buff is a little bit more noticeable here. Our two shot kill potential to the body is now 50 meters, which is great with this gun. As for the SO14, this also got a bit of a buff across the board to our damage ranges, which is nice to see. And the same thing holds true with the Lockman 762. This also got a damage range buff across the board. And this adjustment was fairly noticeable as well. So pretty much across the board with the battle rifle category, we saw buffs here, so they should all feel at least a little bit better than pre-patch. Some more than others. Now let's move into the shotgun category. And with the Lockwood 300, they mentioned they reduced the mid damage distance range. However, based on my testing, I can't detect any change here whatsoever with this gun. So it appears to be essentially untouched. Then the Bryson 800 saw a very slight reduction to its almost guaranteed one shot kill potential. This is hardly a noticeable change. However, the Bryson 890 saw a noticeable reduction to its one shot kill potential. It's now noticeably worse in this area compared to the Bryson 800, which does make sense since it has several other benefits over the Bryson 800. Now, moving on, let's get into the Marksman Rifle category, and there were some surprising changes in this one. The most surprising to me was with the SAB-50. This actually got several buffs, which is strange, because this was already the best quickscoping gun in the entire game, at least in my opinion. But with this, first up, our damage ranges were both increased by a noticeable margin. Then, our aim down sight speed was improved, even though this already had an amazing aim down sight speed for a one-shot kill weapon. It's now 20 milliseconds faster. And our aim walking movement speed was also increased by quite a noticeable margin. It's now 2.72 meters per second. So the SAB-50 is noticeably better post-patch compared to pre-patch. And honestly, this one has me scratching my head a little bit. When I first saw this in the patch notes, I thought, of course, it's going to be a nerf to the SAB-50. I definitely didn't expect to see this much of a buff. After that though, we have the Lockwood Mark II, and with this one, there were no damage range adjustments, but just like with the SAB, they improved our aim down sight speed, as well as our aim walking speed, and that aim down sight speed now is very fast. This is actually faster than a lot of the assault rifles in the game at 250 milliseconds. And this change I think was a good one. I don't think the Lockwood Mark II was ever a problem or anything, since its one shot kill potential is very noticeably shorter than something like the SAB. So I'm actually on board with this particular change. 
Next, we have the SPR-208, and this one just saw a bit of a buff to its one-shot kill potential to the upper torso, neck, and head. It used to be about 55 meters, now it's over 60 meters. Again, I never really saw the SPR-208 as an issue. The SAB is objectively superior in most areas, and that still holds true after these buffs since the SAB got more of a buff than the SPR did. But then finally, for the marksman rifle category, I was very surprised to see a noticeable nerf to the EBR-14. Especially to its maximum damage range, this went from over 50 meters down to less than 40 meters. And this is the range where we're guaranteed a two-shot kill in regular core game modes. Even if you shoot them in the leg, you'll get a two-shot kill here. Now, beyond that 39 meters, you have to hit them in the torso if you want to maintain a two-shot kill potential. Also, our one-shot kill potential to the head went from about 63 meters down to about 58 meters, so that was also a noticeable nerf in that area. And like I said, I was just a bit surprised to see this. I don't think the EBR-14 has ever really been a problem in regular core game modes. I don't think it was a bad gun, but I also don't think it was good enough that it deserved any nerfs, especially when you consider the fact that other marksman rifles like the SAB-50 saw a noticeable buff. In either case, let's move into the next category of weapons. This is going to be the LMGs, and we'll start this off with the HCR-56. This one saw a really nice buff to its three-shot kill potential. I would say the HCR is now going to be quite noticeably better post-patch compared to pre-patch. So this is definitely one worth checking out after this update if you haven't used it recently. And then the only other change to the LMGs was with the Rap H. They slightly increased its maximum damage range. And this is the range at which we are guaranteed a four shot kill. However, our four shot kill potential to the body was unchanged with this. It's still 57 meters. Now, finally, for the sniper rifle category, we saw several adjustments. And let's start this off with the Karak 300. With this gun, they mentioned an increase to close range damage. But what they actually did here is they just added a damage range where our one-shot kill potential is extended to the shoulders, because previously there was no one-shot kill to the shoulder. And this new damage range will extend just a little bit beyond 30 meters. But on top of this, they also increased our base movement speed and our sprint movement speed, and this now gives it the fastest movement speed out of any of the sniper rifles in the game. So overall, the Karak 300 is going to perform noticeably better post-patch compared to pre-patch. After that, we saw a few buffs to the FJX Imperium sniper rifle. With this, our aim down sight speed was noticeably improved from 580 meters per second down to 540 meters per second. So that's quite a noticeable improvement there. And they also improved our aim walking speed, which doesn't really matter all that much for a sniper rifle. It's still very, very slow at 1.12 meters per second. But then finally, they improved our hip fire spread with the FJX. And it's now got the best hip fire spread in the sniper rifle category, which I honestly found to be a little bit surprising. I don't think this gun really needed any buffs, but it is better now post-patch compared to pre-patch. Now, let's get into the Signal 50, and this one saw a very noticeable nerf here. With this, they added an additional damage range, but in doing so, this very significantly reduced the range at which we're able to get a one-shot kill anywhere in the torso, plus anywhere from the elbow up. Previously, that range was about 65 meters. Now it's about 49 meters. So that's quite a huge nerf to the power of the Signal 50. Anything beyond 49 meters now is going to require an upper torso, neck, or headshot in order to get a one-shot kill. And this just leaves us with one last gun that was adjusted for Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. This was the SPX-80. And with this one, they mentioned in the patch notes that there was reduced damage range, but I can't seem to detect any change whatsoever to any of our ranges or our body multipliers. As far as I can tell, the SPX is actually identical post-patch compared to pre-patch. And there we have it. That is going to wrap it up for all of the weapon balancing that took place with the Season 5 Reloaded update for Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. Overall, there were a lot of very minor range changes that honestly you probably won't even notice. Nothing too major here. I don't think they really mixed up the meta all that much. I would say some of the standouts, though, were the HCR-56. That one saw that very nice improvement to its three-shot kill range. So definitely worth checking out post-patch. And also, very surprisingly, the SAB-50. This is, for some reason, quite noticeably better now, even though I don't think it needed that at all. But with that, I am curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. What are you thinking about all of the weapon balancing that took place with this update? Are you generally happy with these changes? Confused by any of them like I am? Just let me know all of those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.